Sunday, May 23, 2021, at around 7 a.m. Dear Raptech, we wanted to let you know our team has reviewed your content and we don't think it's in line with our community guidelines. We've age restricted it, we haven't given you a flagging. This happened five minutes after they decided that they were completely right in flagging my channel nine times in a row and then removing it and then adding it again for another incident where they vacillated back and forth about flagging me for what was it that time? Let's see what the excuse was. Um, oh, yeah. Me explaining what the maximum flight speed for an aircraft was by reading the manual from Boeing. And that was flagged for hate speech. We've reviewed your content carefully and confirmed it violates our hate speech policy. Maximum airspeed for a Boeing 757 and 767 is not a low speed. It's 0.8 Mach at sea level up to 2,000 feet. It's not really any change in the, in the speed. The speed rate is almost identical. People claiming otherwise are simply lying about something you can look up from the spec sheet from an airplane. Me posting a video explaining that <clears throat> is hate speech. When that decision came through, excuse me, it was actually a couple of days before. I thought it was a couple hours before. Right after that, they decided to flag me and age restrict or restrict my video. What was the title of the video YouTube and Google said they weren't going to give me a strike for, but it violates their policy? The title of the video is YouTube flags me nine times for showing that marijuana doesn't cure or prevent cancer because marijuana does not prevent or cure cancer. Google promotes the idea because they won't take down medical misinformation. This video will contain almost identical content to that video to shove it in YouTube and Google's face that they're promoting medical misinformation while flagging mine. Now, they didn't flag my video for hate speech in this case, and they didn't tell me why they flagged it. Even though I'm publicly accusing Google and YouTube of promoting medical misinformation and that I'm telling people not to listen to the bullshit. But this time they didn't flag me. Now remember, the other video, which they said is totally hate speech, was me telling people that airplanes don't have an inability to fly at sea level because they're going too fast, because that's not a thing. The airspeed at sea level, even though the atmosphere is thicker, doesn't change enough to make it to where you can't fly uh, 757 and 767 near sea level. You can't fly it at sea level on like the east or west coast because that would mean you're hitting the water, so obviously that wouldn't work. But they've decided it's hate speech to tell people the airspeed of an unladen aircraft at, at sea level or below 2,000 feet. You're not supposed to fly an aircraft, a big one, unless you're landing or taking off below 2,000 feet above the ground in a metropolitan area, or like let's say Miami or whatever, because you might hit a building. You just want to be above hills, uh, mountain ranges, that sort of thing. But you can actually fly them at full speed, at cruising speed. That's hate speech. Okay. And YouTube won't say what they're flagging me for for saying Google promotes marijuana medical misinformation. And that's a restricted video. So I wonder what I'm going to combine together into the title of this video. Because YouTube and Google promote medical misinformation and hate speech by preventing people from debunking it. You're not allowed to debunk a conspiracy theory or a lie about medicine unless you're a medical authority. Or, in this case, an expert in aircraft design. I have another channel, with, I, I, nobody looks at the video, where I have a copy of the Boeing manual up on the screen telling you the speed rating at or near sea level. For argumentation purposes only. They, they don't want you to actually fly it that low and that fast. But that doesn't mean there's anything 
that is it's not even dangerous to fly it at that speed. That's that's the thing they don't want anybody to you know have up because it's hate speech. And they're not telling me what they're flagging me for because I'm publicly accusing Google and YouTube of promoting medical misinformation if it's about marijuana. Now, the people who post videos making up bullshit claims about marijuana or airspeed of aircraft don't get flagged. I get flagged for debunking them. The more I say this, the more stupid Google and YouTube look for flagging me for pointing out that they're promoting lies. This may be the only video I upload today. I haven't had anything I wanted to upload for the last week because it's been kind of depressing dealing with mainstream media lib side, the liberal side, repeating conspiracy theories that were originally conservative conspiracy theories. I think they're doing it to trick conservatives into going into contrarian mode and actually saying things that are real now because I'm seeing CNN and every other news source now promoting UFO bullshit stories from Tom DeLonge and his crew. And I'm seeing them promote bullshit stories about a Chinese lab theory. Which I'm not allowed to comment on because I'll be accused of medical misinformation. The funny part about this is, now that mainstream news is saying the same shit that used to get flagged, YouTube's still not going to flag them. No, it wasn't started deliberately or by accident in a laboratory. That's been done to death. It would require you have literally not tissue samples, but live bats, thousands of them, trying to create random combinations of viruses to create this. That wouldn't be an accident. That would be, gee, almost like you're bat farming or bat harvesting, which is what the fucking wet market had happening in effect because the bats that we're talking about are native to the area around the the entire area. The lab... And the wet market are near each other. The lab is an insulated area where everybody's wearing masks to prevent themselves from getting sick, and they still got sick. Hmm. But they weren't allowed or required, excuse me, to wear masks outside around the wet market or people who'd come in contact with it. So, A, they got it from the stuff in the lab when it's insulated, preventing that on purpose. Or, B, they got sick because they walked outside and came in contact with people who were carrying the early version of COVID-19, which, as you may have already figured out, has a ridiculously high transmission rate with non-symptomatic carriers. Carriers carrying it and giving it to other people that don't really show any symptoms, which is the one thing everybody keeps forgetting. But that's medical misinformation now, because mainstream media wants to promote, uh, for some reason, the stupid lab theory, the lab accident theory. It can't be naturally occurring now. Even Fauci's parroting this. I don't care who says it. What is your compelling reason to believe this? Well, they got sick at the lab on a certain month. Yes, a month after the first cases, the real first cases happened in Wuhan in the area. Yeah, it happened in October. We don't know exactly what month because the Chinese government lied all the time. But we do know about the stuff that happened in the lab, and it happened after the first cases they won't admit were probably COVID-19. So depending on what you wish to believe, you will believe it started in the lab, in spite of the fact that the lab is designed on purpose, day one, to make it nearly impossible to transmit the shit. Unless they went out of their way to not wash their equipment, and not change masks, and not use air filters. They're required to do air filters, And every other method that would make it almost impossible to transmit simply because they don't want to contaminate the samples in Petri dishes. Meanwhile, doing it in Petri dishes wouldn't work because this thing needs to mutate in a living cell in a living host and then transfers rapidly to other hosts as fast as possible. A community spread in a cave full of bats is more effective than a bunch of Petri dishes that do not have the ability to sneeze And a wet market would provide the intermediate host, hundreds of them, we don't even know which one. We have a couple of them narrowed down to what it might be. And Wuhan is the only place, I didn't bring this up, I can't do a video on it, but I'm going to fucking do it now because fuck you, YouTube! Wuhan is right near a border crossing area where their new version of the Silk Road, the real Silk Road, where they transfer animals they're not supposed to have from various countries. There's a country border there that's very porous. 
which is where most of the transfer of illegally transported animals go through. It's not that the animals carried a disease, well, not the disease, but they carried other diseases that could mutate easier that they wouldn't normally come in contact with, is the presumption. But more importantly, in conditions where humans created an abnormal, non-natural condition where they would have easy access and transfer between each other. Not only did the, the wet market actually have some of these bats, not all of them, but they were in an area where those bats were commonly available, and it's an area, one of many areas, where they detected viruses that are very similar to this. One of many areas, including the rat G13 or whatever the fuck it's called, that had actually gotten there. You know, retroactively studying them by going out and trapping them and testing them. You know, give them tests for various things. Finding, oh yeah, all the precursors are here. This is the one place on earth where you shouldn't have a wet market and you should make it absolutely impossible, not illegal, impossible for animals to be transferred across a border at all. I don't even care about legal transfer. Just say no, nothing transfers. Why? Because fuck you, that's why we're not going to let you do it anymore. Why? Because we just spent over a year with our entire planet fucked into the ground. You're not allowed to transfer animals anymore. We're shooting on sight. This is going to be the tightest border on the planet. The Chinese government could have actually done that. But no, because one of the products transferred is an animal product that's supposed to cure erectile dysfunction in Chinese dignitaries and members of the Chinese Communist Party, apparently, so they have to leave it porous. Instead of just saying, you idiots are part of the problem. Bang! No more problem. Now keep crying while we give you the, you know, the duct tape and the cotton so you can pack that wound in your crotch, and now we won't have a problem with you at all because there's nothing to fix anymore for you. Yes, pangolins. This could have all been alleviated if everyone in China just accepted the fact that um, Little Willie isn't that important. You know, it's funny. That's the one thing that the Chinese government won't cover. They won't discuss it. They can't. An illegal trade of pangolins for their scales. For Chinese medicine. If you're not aware of it, that ancient Chinese medicine thing, that's propaganda in China. What they wanted to do was give everybody an alternative medicine thing that didn't cost the government anything because there's a billion fucking people in China and they can't cover them with their own medical system because communism doesn't fucking work. Capitalism doesn't work perfectly either. Combining the two kind of a little bit might work. Pseudo-socialism, I guess. It fucks up everything else, but uh, yeah, okay, I can see that now. Sure, why not? I don't know what the answer is. But I do know that they didn't want to admit communism wouldn't work. Do you really believe the Chinese government is ever going to admit that communism doesn't work? Please stick your head in a bucket of shit and inhale if you really believe they're going to admit that they can't make everything work their way. So what did they do? They invented the idea of Chinese traditional medicine. When you look it up, That's not really true. What they did is they looked at folk medicine, found out that it wouldn't cost them anything, and told all their doctors to practice it. They started giving people what I would call low-grade medical education in the area and improved the, the folk medicine to being almost Western medicine style. That was cheaper than taking all the Western medicine people, you know, real doctors, and just putting them in the communities, which was their other plan they scrapped. They would have to evacuate every medical school and put them to work uh, northern exposure TV show style by putting a bunch of qualified medical professionals in the equivalent to hick towns, dealing with banjo players, only the Chinese version of it, and having them actually give them medical coverage that would be real. Well, fuck that. Let's just teach a bunch of uh, bone rattlers how to actually treat COVID-19. Worked real good, didn't it? Anyway, I've gone off on a tangent. Yes, YouTube flagged the shit out of me for several subjects where I'm not allowed to debunk anything. So I'm just going to stick it in one video they can flag in one shot. Again, YouTube and Google promote medical misinformation and hate speech by not letting us debunk it. Thanks for watching. Have a good day. Good luck with that. Fuck you, Google.